Thank you for joining me on the Who God Says podcast. I am your host and Kingdom Ambassador, Ty Chandra. Hi, hi, hi. Today we have a special guest with us. <clears throat> she is a speaker, resilient coach, and author of Flourishing After Adversity, Miss Laura Mangum Groom. Yay! <laughs> hi, it's good to Welcome. be here. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your talent. And thank you for your story. Oh, it, it, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited to talk with you. I am too. Woo. Oh, so we met previously and um, mm -hmm. after we get through this recording, the audience is going to understand the deep exhale. Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh my God. So um, I just want to start by just a little bit of a background. Like, where did you grow up? Well, I, I am a native Houstonian and um, I grew up in, in Texas. Um, I had just a, a, a normal childhood and um, just uh, have a twin sister and a younger brother. And um, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a happy childhood. Um, yeah. You know, it was just a normal childhood. And uh, so I uh, never anticipated, you know, just thought life was going to be normal. And yeah. uh, God had something else planned for me along the way. Well, doesn't it happen that way? We think it's going to be one way. And then God said, well, no, I didn't <laughs> say that. So let me let me introduce you to this. <laughs> It is, you know, we, we think life is going to be from A to B, you know, and we just, you know, go in that linear fashion and then, you know, life says, no, nope, we're going to kind of go like this and, you know, maybe really low and maybe really high, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, we take it as unexpected, right? You know, it's like, yep. why is this happening? <laughs> Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so today we're going to be talking about the power of hope and transforming our pain into purpose and embracing joy. So before we start, I have my tissues. Oh. <laughs> Make sure I have those there. Audience, you might want to get your tissues ready. Okay, so we're diving right in. Everybody hold on to your wigs and your hats and clutch your pearls. Okay. <laughs> so, so <cute>. <laughs> okay. So, um, you have experienced breast cancer, um, losing a child, mm -hmm. a heart transplant and a divorce all within a short period of time of each other. So looking back at those different experiences, um, what do you remember feeling through those times? Mm, lots of emotions. Um, with the breast cancer, um, uh, during that time, uh, all of these happened you know, while I was married, um, but we had just started a new business. We were just a couple of years into the business. And then I got diagnosed with breast cancer and, um, um, but it, a, along the way, God just had his hand in everything and, um, it, and it helped tremendously. I, you know, I still had to go through everything. It was still devastating. I had to figure things out, but, um, God just brought opportunities for me along the way, which made it better made it easier but it, it still was um a difficult journey with the breast cancer and um and then right after my treatments um a couple of months later my um son my oldest son um committed suicide and um we had adopted him from russia 10 years mm -hmm. prior he was 10 years old and he was such a joy to have. He had been in the orphanage for seven years. So, um, before we got him and, um, and, and so we had 
we had 10 good years with him. Um, it was, it was a shock when that happened because I was in the hospital getting ready uh, to have a double mastectomy. And Mm -hmm. so it, it, it was, um, yeah, I felt shock. I was devastated. Um, it, it, uh, it, you know, even with the heart transplant, you know, a couple of, uh, two years later, um, I had uh, complications from the chemo, um, and it, it had, um, it had uh, triggered congestive heart failure for me. And so that prompted the heart transplant. And that being told you have to have a heart transplant, it was bittersweet. Um, on one hand, I was so I had spent several years just trying to breathe. My heart was wow. just giving out. And at first we thought it was the chemo treatments because, you know, those are pretty harsh drugs being taken. Yep. Um, but then um, I was diagnosed uh, with genetic um, congestive heart failure and uh and so january of 2020 i had um been told you need a heart transplant you know this was right when covid was happening and i was i was so happy to get the heart transplant because i was so tired of trying to breathe it was so bad that you know how we just take for granted to like if you sigh or you like you were taking a deep yes. breath on i i had to re- i had to close my eyes i had to relax all my muscles just to try to take that a deep breath because I was, mm. I could only breathe shallow and, um, and you don't know how much you really want to breathe until you can't. Right. <laughs> I mean, right. it, it was very difficult. It, it, and I think that was the hardest part is just, um, I couldn't lay down to sleep. I, I mostly just sat in a chair I, to, to sleep. I would just grab a, a pillow and um, just cover my, um, you know, just lean over the pillow and try to sleep that way. Um, mm-hmm. it, it was just, it was, it, it just seemed like um, just that was my main purpose was trying to breathe. So, um, so when I was told I had, the, was going to get the heart transplant, I, I was just so ready to, I figured I'm going to either, it's going to be successful and I get a new heart or I go home to be with the father. <laughs> and I mean, yeah. I, it was, so those were the two options and it didn't occur to me until I was going through the training of, of what to prepare for a heart transplant. I mean, I just thought it's either going to be good or, well, either way it was going to be good. I, I was going to be, mm-hmm. um, you know, I was going to get relief one way or the other. Um, but I never expect, I never planned on the in between. And, um, that was when it was kind of like reality, um, that things could go wrong. I could, you know, with the surgery, something could go wrong. And, um, and, and so that was scary, but it's like, I just prayed, Lord, make it one way or the other, because, um, you know, my, I'm just going to trust you to, to be with the surgeons and, and make it happen. But I, I think the most devastating, um, thing that happened, uh, you know, other than my, my son dying was one month after, um, I was home from my heart transplant. Um, I realized my, um, husband, um, had been in another relationship for over a year and our marriage was over and, you know, you know, we've been married almost 27 or uh, almost 28 years. And, um, our, our other son was grown and, and out on his own. Um, um, but, uh, okay. but yeah, um, finding, <laughs> finding out that, uh, um, you know, my, my husband had, had moved on, uh, that was truly devastating because I was supposed to have someone take care of me for a year after my surgery. Um, and everything kind of just, it, it, it just kind of all turned upside down, you know? And, yeah. and, uh, so, so during, during that five-year time period, I had so many emotions going on. I mean, it was, 
I, I was at my lowest. I was at my highest. I mean, you know, with um, the heart transplant, um, gosh, that couldn't have been any better. I mean, it, that's when I realized that was all oh God, because when I woke up, I didn't, I, I looked like a science experiment. I had so many tubes and wires all over me and, wow. and, um, and, and, you know, because it was COVID, I couldn't have any visitors. So the, the, yeah. um, the, the hospital stuff was just wonderful. They treated me like family. Um, but I didn't have any pain. It was just, it was amazing. I mean, everybody was just saying, you, you, are you sure you don't feel any pain? And I'd say, no, no. And I promise you, I don't have a high tolerance for pain anyway, but I, I'm not, I don't feel any pain. And I mean, you know, how wonderful that God, cause like, you know, I mentioned before, God knew what was coming around the corner and he needed me to trust him. Yeah. And, um, and boy, did I, <laughs> you know, because what came around the corner was, was that was really, really, really tough, you know? Yeah. Oh my God. I have so many emotions just listening. So you are devastated. I heard a lot of you are devastated. You are exhausted. Um, but then betrayed. you got a yeah, closer relationship I, with God because you had learned how to actually trust him, you know, and trust him in everything. And you whew, you know, and, a lot. and and to to go along with, you know, how, how you talk about your name, the importance of your name or, you know, our names. Yeah. Um, when, um, when I moved in with my sister, um, during the divorce, I felt like I was such damaged goods. And I figured that's mm. why, you know, my husband seeked his fulfillment elsewhere. Mm. And, um, and, and so I was seeing a, a our, I had gone back to our marriage counselor for individual counseling. And that was the best thing that happened with the divorce because she reminded me, um, you know, that I, I need to get back in the word, you know, read the Bible yeah. and I need to focus on what am I going to do, have a goal each day to move on. And I was reading the Bible and I remember reading, you know, just passages of, I can't remember now, right off the top of my head, but it's like, I am a child of God. You know, he, he formed me in my mother's womb. I am yeah. so special. I mean, and I thought, my gosh, that's what I needed to hear right now. I, you know, he chose me. I, I am worthy. I am, you know, special. And that's when I realized things were kind of turning around for me that I did matter. Mm -hmm. I did, I was loved. I could trust somebody. And, um, that was so important, you know, to, to have that positive relationship. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, one of our guests said the roadmap to life is the actual Bible. And I'm like, you're right. It, I, it is. You're, you're it asking. truly is. I, I can't imagine going through the things that I've done without my faith. I, I mean, yeah. how wonderful it is to know that there's, you know, a, a God who knows everything. He sees everything. You know, he knows exactly what we, I mean, he, he sees everything and knows what we're going through. And when we feel all alone and we feel nobody cares, nobody loves us. And it's like, how wonderful that he's there. He's somebody we can always trust. He's always in control. He'll always take care of us. Maybe not the way we want, th we think we need to be taken care of, you know, yeah. but it's, 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 it's going to be better for us. And I, I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, now just going through those episodes, it's like, Lord, I trust anything you throw my way. Um, right. Even this, you know, this is this is uncomfortable for me because I'm not familiar with it. And it's like I but I don't want it to hold me back by telling, you know, my message of hope and that if I can go yeah. through this 
and 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 come come out of it with um you know with with self worth and confidence and joy i think that is the biggest thing is we think we're never going to feel joy again and yeah. you know that that's what i want to let people know you can go through tough times but you will you know but it's your choice you have to rise above and and you have to tell yourself i'm going to get through this and and then that's you know that's how i came up with my three step action plan and um mm -hmm. to get through adversity <clears throat> With each point of adversity that you experience, what do you think that each event was teaching you? Do you think they all ran together and was teaching a big lesson or did you think each individual event taught you something different? It, well, both, <laughs> um, <laughs> both, mostly, I mean, I learned so many things about myself that mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't know how strong I was until yeah. I went through these experiences and, um, and, and each time I got through one, I mean, I think the breast cancer really kind of taught me a wonderful lesson that I have to look for the good stuff. In fact, there was a sign on the chemo room um, wall that said, um, look for the positive um, and be, be thankful because it could be a lot worse. And yeah. that was really an eye opener because, you know, when we're going through, when we're going through tough times, it is, t it is tough. It is challenging. But if we look back and say, gosh, this could be so much worse and actually think of how it could be worse, we find gratitude and thankfulness that it's not. I mean, what I went through was tragic, but it, there were so many ways it could have been a lot worse. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, and the yeah. fact that it wasn't, I'm so grateful for. So it taught me how to look how to be grateful and appreciate things it's taught me what was important in life what i thought you know was important wasn't as important as um it was you know i mean like material things um right it just uh no, you know just a status or something or what people think you know it just really taught me so much about myself and um and, and just how strong i can be um you know if people if, if you told me i was going to go through these things before they happened i'd say oh my gosh i can't i can't do that you know and and, and you know too i mean you've had you've been through some things in your life recently yes. you know and, yes, and and you got through them so so what do you think helped you get through them or, or how did you get through them? Did you just go, okay, um, I'm going to do this? <laughs> oh no. Um, uh, it was my faith and it was, um, just knowing that there was something on the other side. I went through it. I bared it, but, um, now people say grin and bear it. I didn't grin. <laughs> no. I didn't grin at all, but I bared it, but I, I just knew that there was something on the other side of this. Something has to be better than this. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was my faith, really. My faith was the thing, because I believe when I went through um, my whole thing, and I don't want to take away from your story, but when I went through my whole no, thing, no, no. I believe it was my faith that was being tested, and it was my faith that carried me through. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I mean, we, we, I, we don't have time to go through everything that I would love to say about all those things. But um, I, I just, you know, it, sometimes you just go through, you just say, I've just got to get through today, you know, just just yeah. get through today. And then in the morning, um, you know, I would say this is a new day. 
just try to get one thing done. And, um, you know, like, like um, I, I, I think when, like when my son died, it was tragic. It was unexpected. I did get to talk to him. Um, he, he was going through some things. Uh, I don't have time to go into it right now, but, but I, I did get to talk to him and, and, you know, I, I, I did get to tell him, you know, no matter what he does, we will always love him. And, um, but we, we don't like his behavior and, and we need to find a way to help him help himself stop doing this bad behavior but we we will never we love him unconditionally we'll never stop loving him and i i think i'm so grateful that i had that opportunity to say that because um because i was in the hospital um when my husband and my son went home you know a couple hours later my husband came um, back and told me, you know, that he had committed suicide. My, our son had committed suicide. Oh. And, um, I mean, I was in shock, you know, and, and, um, the, the nurses and the doctors were willing to postpone my surgery, but I, I was like, I was dreading the surgery anyway. It's like, it's scheduled. Let's just go on with it. Um, one thing that helped me during that time was our, pastor and, and his wife had come to visit us in the hospital um, before my surgery and it, because they had gone through um, the same experience a couple of years prior. And so it was so comforting to talk to somebody because you have questions. I, I, you know, I, and, and the first thing they said is don't, don't play. What if, you know, it, it happened you just have to accept it because it doesn't, I know that sounds terrible, but it's like, you can't yeah, bring it back hard. by it's going really down that road. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. I mean, and, it, and I think that's when, that's what I talk about is radical acceptance. You know, radical acceptance mm -hmm. is you have to accept things that are out of your control. You don't have to like it. You don't have to accept it but you just have to acknowledge it and you have to, mm -hmm. you, you have to find a way to say it happened out and I'm going to find a way to move on. And, um, and, and what I chose to do is I wanted to honor my son's memory. And, um, and, and so I turned his loss into a positive, um, by, um, volunteering with, um, to be a mentor with foster youth who were aging out of the foster care system and going out on their own, you know, and, and so I, I've been doing that for about four years now, and that's been a real joy. And, um, because, because my son died when he was 19. So that's about the average age of the, the foster youth that are, you know, coming out on their own. Yeah. And, um, so, you know, so I, I, that's how I choose to handle his death. I don't more, I, I did my mourning, but I'm yeah. now I'm celebrating his life. That is awesome. That is awesome. So it, it, that's it's, a blessing. It, a lot of people can't move on. It, yeah. It's I, to me, I think it's all about reframing. I know a lot of people, it's hard to move on after they lose yeah. a loved one. Um, you know, you lost your dad and, um, yes. and I, I don't know if it's because of my old age now, <laughs> you know, I'm 61. I had to start life over at 58. Um, but yeah. I, I, I really truly believe about celebrating life and, um, mm -hmm. and, and I, I think that's important. We, we, it doesn't minimalize losing somebody, you know, by any means you have to, you have to go through those grief, grief stages and you, you have to acknowledge those feelings in order to get to that acceptance stage. And then, um, I, I just choose to, to look for the positive and, um, and, and reframe events, not, not, um, 
not make things up, but just pull out the positive from yeah. those memories and, and focus on that. And, um, you know, it is so far it's, it's, it's working for me. <laughs> I have joy again. I, I love to talk about my son. He did it a lot of, it was a lot of fun times when trying to teach him, you know, how to speak English and, you know, he had to acclimate to our, to being in a family and, and, you know, growing up in Texas, he had to learn to talk, say y'all and, and with this little Russian accent, it, <laughs> it were so many fun memories, <laughs> you know, yeah, because y'all is so, a part of our language. Y'all, you know? I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> it, it, even our though I still mispronounce is... New Orleans, <laughs> but it's fine. It, there's so many people say it. Whatever way you say it is fine. New Orleans. I know. I, I, have, a, I, mean, I have a friend. You know, we're our who own, lives our own there. state. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Join the Kingdom Fanatics community. Get exclusive content, green room access with our guests, and more. Visit our website at whogodsays.com. Like and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We greatly appreciate your love and support. To find all information on joining our community, being a guest on the show, donating on our PayPal donation page, and more, visit us at whogodsays.com. Now back to the show. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think is the toughest thing for us to do or believe in when we're faced with adversity? Do... um. How do we stop those negative thoughts from consuming our day? That's a good question. I think when, when, when we go through tough times, it's natural to focus on the negative. And most of the things that are, that are negative are the things that are out of our control. And so when we focus on what's out of our control, that's when we're going to start feeling that um, feeling helpless and eventually we'll feel hopeless because we can't do anything about it. Yeah. And so we're just going to just ruminate, just keep thinking, you know, why is that happening? Or, or, you know, why is that person doing this? And it's, it's all the things that we don't have control over. So if we focus on what is in our control to change that empowers us to move forward. And, and it's hard. Um, I, I, mm -hmm. my three steps that I, I talk about, I, I can see sometimes the looks on people's faces and they go, well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, of course it is. It's easy. But when you're going through tough times, how come we can't practice that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I mean, it's, it, it's, you know, cause like when I was going through my tough times, I needed to know, you know, at, at 58, my life was starting over COVID shut everything down. I had limited resources. Mm -hmm. I was even supposed to be quarantining at home for a year, you know, to, so my heart, uh, to prevent infection and rejection of my new heart. And, um, so I was kind of like, well, what can I do? What can I do? And, um, and that was really where I had to focus on what can I do? And, and I had to sit down yeah. and make a list. I mean, sometimes it was just like, I can get out of bed. I can take a shower. I can, um, call a friend, you know, and, and then it, those little steps made me feel like I accomplished something. I'd make my bed every morning so I wouldn't crawl back into it. Um, cause I, I had some, yeah. um, decorative pillows, but you know, it's, you don't think about that, but when, in, until you're going through tough times and you feel like your life is out of control. And, mm -hmm. and so that, that's what my first step is, is developing that growth mindset and accepting what's out of your control and focusing on what's in your control to move forward. And, um, you know, once you can do that, then, then the next step is, is it becomes easier because it's, that's what I had to do next was what am I going to do to earn a living? And that's when I, I decided I kind of took inventory of myself. 
you know, and, and that's what I tell my clients, you know, what are your skills? What are your talents? What are your passions? What, what are your strengths? And, you know, and then we go into resources. Who do you know? Um, what's in network, you know, support people, um, you know, community resources, the internet. Uh, I, my son laughs at me because I don't ask him so many questions now on tech stuff because I go to YouTube for everything now. So, I mean, (laughs) you have to learn to be resourceful, you know, and, you know, so, so how are you going to make this happen? And, um, and I, I think it, it, when you start to see that you can get things done and you can move forward, it helps with the, you're focusing more on the journey not so much the outcome. And I think that's so important when you're going through adversity, you may not get where you want to go, but it's either going to be a better way or you'll find things out about yourself that you didn't know. And you'll find opportunities that you wouldn't normally go after if this hadn't happened. Yeah, you sure do. You sure do. It, and um, is that the way that you became a resilience co- coach? Yes, it did because I couldn't. Um, I couldn't go out and work. I had to stay home, and you know, with COVID, uh, it's it's like people were people were starting online businesses or people were working remotely. And I knew how to run a business. Um, I, I had a lot of, you know, skills uh, for running a business, um, um, operating a business. Uh, then it was like, okay, well, what, what do I know? Well, because of the, the things I'd been going through, people were saying, gosh, you're so resilient and you have such a good sense mm-hmm. of humor about things. And, <laughs> and so I, I, cause I did, I, I had to start, it was sometimes you get to the point where you have to laugh or cry and, you know, and I can always make fun of myself. It's that comes natural, but, um, but it, it's, uh, I, I just decided, you know, people are asking me, how do you go through tough times and I thought, well, yeah. that's my talent. That's my superpower is, um, is resiliency. And yes. I'm, I'm, I'm good at training people. So I'll just merge the two. And, and, and that's what I'll do is I'll teach people how I got through these, um, you know, situations. And at least it's a framework. It, you know, I, I won't solve your problems for you, but I'll teach you these coping skills and these resilience tools that will help you figure out a way to solve your situation and come out um, in a better situation, a better mindset and, 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 and find joy along the way. And I I think that's a, um, you don't even have to go through tragedy to apply the framework. It's, uh, you know, it's, you know how people say, I'm just sick and tired. Well, when you're sick and tired, these tools will work too. I mean, it's, it, it, but it requires you to step out of your comfort zone and, you know, people like their comfort zone and even if they're miserable, it's still their comfort comfort. zone. There's no growth in comfort. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so that's why you have to, get sick and tired of being sick and tired or in my situation be thrown into be thrown out of your comfort zone and you know and go well what am I going to do now and I don't recommend that for anybody (laughs) you know hopefully (laughs) nobody ever has to be thrown out of their comfort zone but it makes you do things I'll tell you that I, I if I mean I don't know if I, I knew I wanted to help people. I love to help people. Um, I just didn't ever see myself doing it this way, but, but God did, you know, and I have to say, um, God has led me to so many wonderful opportunities 
to help. And, and, and that's why I wrote my book is because I want to get my framework into as many hands as possible. And, and, and yes, it'll be available on Amazon, but you can, you'll be able to get it for free on my website and just pay shipping and handling. And um, that's how passionate mm -hmm. I am about getting this framework out to, to help people. And as um, someone said to me, well, they may not even be going through a tough situation, but it's like a reference manual. And that's what I wanted it to be because when I was going through, going through the divorce and, and I mean, everything just kind of seemed hopeless at one point. Yeah. I, I had to tell myself, you know, God can bring one, bring at least one good thing out of every bad situation and I have to look for it. And and I, and I, and I did, and I, I found one and then I found two and I found three and I started, you know, I started seeing a lot of opportunities and a lot of possibilities. And if that didn't bring you joy, I don't know what can, because that's, yeah. that's what we have to do is we have to change our, our mindset. We have to, to look for the good. We have to hunt for the good. And, and I came up with the mantra that I made myself like every day I, I, I had to do one or two of the, the things and it was my resilience mantra. And, and, and it was, um, hunt the good stuff, focus, uh, find the humor, seek the positive and focus on your blessings. And I told myself, Every day when I woke up, I had to do at least two of those things Great. that day to move forward. And, 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 and it becomes a habit, you know, it, you can, and I'll find myself when I, and yeah. when I hear friends or just hear people talking about negative things in their day, my mind just automatically, I don't say it out loud, but my mind automatically says, well, at least this didn't happen, or at least this happened. You know, I mean, it's become a habit and I have to be careful. Not everybody wants to hear that, you know, yeah. <laughs> they, they want, they want yeah. to enjoy their misery. Yeah. And, and, and so, but, but, but see how, you know, I mean, you do it long enough, um, you know, and, and, and it just, it, it just happens. And, and, and so I, when people say, are, well, are you on a, I had somebody ask me on a scale from one to 10, um, how happy are you? And, and I, cause I don't believe in tens or ones. Um, I, I just think, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I just, I, it's like, mm, you know, that, but I, I would say, I would de most definitely confidently say a nine. And they looked at me, you know, like really? And I, <laughs> and I said, yeah, I, I can honestly say on a scale of happiness or joy, whatever you want to call it, I am a nine. And, and that's because I choose to look for the positive in things because my life could be a lot worse. I am not yeah. physically handicapped. You know, I, 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 I mean, there's so much I have going for me, even though I've been through that stuff, it's, yes. you know, I, 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 I can focus on my blessings and, you know, and, and, and I'm joyful. My, my um, son got married this past summer and now um, they just found out they're expecting, you know, so my first grandbaby is coming. I mean, life is good. <laughs> Yes. I, I'm meeting wonderful people online and, you know, and helping out in the community. And I, I mean, I, I, I would have to say this is probably the happiest I've been in a long time, you know, and, and I don't recommend anybody go get a heart transplant, you know, but, but, you know, this new part <laughs> has brought me a second chance at life. And, and I, I'm going to make the most of it. You know, I, yeah. I didn't before, but I'm sure going to now. And I, I should say, I don't recommend people go through tragedy to, to, to get the wake up call, the aha moment, you know, start now, just, just start appreciating things in your life. Practicing gratitude yeah. is the first step I tell everybody, just start practicing gratitude and, and, and things 
you'll find the joy in life. I left, I left you speechless. My, my daughter, <laughs> um, she's 18. We were having a conversation yesterday and I said, um, you know how when people talk to me, I... <laughs> she said, uh, she said, when I told her when people talk to me and they're telling me about something, I try to flip it for them so they can see a different perspective. And my daughter, the 18 year old, she was like, oh my God, mom, that is so annoying when you do that. <laughs> And I was like, because sometimes it's not what you, it's not what you think it is, you know, and you have to look for the good in it. Everybody don't have bad intentions. And so I, I tell them, you know, try to flip it over to the other side, look at it from a different perspective. She was like, oh, that is so annoying. I just want to complain in the moment. <laughs> well, you know, I, I do understand oh my, my parents God, used to like, do oh. that. And, and but you know honestly that's really a good thing to do because because of them just making sure that I've thought things out you know because you know we know everything when we're a teenager you know our parents are the ones who don't know anything and uh mm -hmm. so but 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 because of my <laughs> parents doing that I learned that to play devil's advocate and and that I would do that with my kids too, yeah. just to make sure that they've looked at both sides. Not that I'm not telling them I don't agree with them, but it's like, look at it from the other side too, because you might not see something. And, um, but, uh, when I was, um, younger in my early twenties, I decided to move to California with a friend of mine. And I, 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 I announced it to my parents cause I was living on my own. And I announced it to my parents, as they said, I didn't ask for their permission <laughs> and they played devil's advocate. Well, because they had trained me for so, you know, for my life, for this moment, I answered every question they had. Well, what about this? Had an answer. What about this? Had an answer. And, and they were kind of speechless. And my dad said, well, Obviously, she's thought about this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, but I did, but I didn't last yeah, very long. I didn't even last a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but but that is good. It, it it is good to 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 look at everything, look at all sides, and um, you know, even going through some tough times. I mean, you know when. You know, even go through yeah. uh, hard times. Like I said, it's so easy to focus on the negative. I can't do that. This is bad. Why did they do that? I wish they hadn't have done this. Mm -hmm. You don't have any control over any of that. You have control over yourself and what's in your control to do. You got your thoughts, your words, and your actions. What can you do with that and all your, your superpowers, you know, that you've taken inventory for? And, and that's more than enough to move forward with something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Um, so your book, you say it comes out next month? Yes, oh it God, does. Really? Um, the end of November. And um, people can find out more uh, about it. They just go to my website at um, www.icopetohope.com. And it's I C O P E, the number two, C O P, um, yeah, C O P, uh, H O P E, I cope to hope, the, but the number two. And, um, and uh, so if they can sign up for my newsletter, or I have a free resource on my website too that they can also get. It's um, three life changing hacks to disrupt thinking traps and to reduce stress. So, um, awesome. so there's a free resource available. Uh, they can just sign up for my newsletter and they'll get, uh, um, information on my new book and, uh, how to get a free copy and, and yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Anything else that you want to tell the audience before we wrap up? I would say, you know, adversity, yeah, adversity can leave you bitter or better, choose better and transform pain into purpose 
and enjoy life again. Just don't ever give up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Laura Broom, for being here today. Thank you for your time. And thank you so much for sharing your story. Because, whoo, it was one. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I can do it, other people can too. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. I'll have all of your links and everything in the description underneath the video and on the episode page. Once again, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Had fun. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today on the Who God Says podcast with your host and Kingdom Ambassador, Ty Chandra. Go to whogodsays.com to join the mailing list for episode premieres, upcoming guests, and more. Send in your questions to be a part of the show at whogodsays at gmail.com. And don't forget, join the Kingdom Fanatic community. Until next time, be blessed and also be a blessing.